Hello, welcome back. Uh, part three now of the uh, Dasvirk Vomag 9 ton truck with 8.8 .8 centimeter flat gun. And uh, this is my mojo restorer. I'm loving it. So, um, I've done a little tiny bit off camera because I had to. Uh, these rods here, they are N37 and they're the torque reaction rods to stop the axles spinning. Um, I fitted them because I wanted to get, while well, everything was still soft, I wanted to make sure the axles were sort of twisted right in relation to each other. Um, and yeah, it's a bit, uh, if I built one of these again, I think I would put these on before I fit these. Because this prop shaft here is determining how far these gearboxes are apart here. And the angle, the way that they're fitted onto the axles determines where the axles go. So I think if I was building this one again, if you haven't done this bit yet, I would fit these bits to the axles first. Don't glue the axles into these arms so they're free to turn. Get those to fit and then fit these gearboxes and that prop shaft together. Don't do it like they say here. Um, I would actually, well, you could do it. Yeah, it is the way they, you could just do that first. So do this bit first and then put that bit in after. Um, in hindsight, that's what I should have done, but uh, I was able to, because the glue was soft, I was able to pull it all about and get it to work. But um, at the end of the day, none of it is really going to be very much seen anyway, so it's not really a massive, massive issue at the end of the day. But uh, there we go. But it's all done. So I've just noticed there's a bit of a mould seam on the edge of those parts. I'm just going to give them a very light rub. Just to... There we go. Just to soften the edges a bit. There we go. Right, so there's a bit of plastic left on there. Right. So that's that assembly there done. The other thing is when this is all glued up, I put it between two blocks to make sure the axles remain parallel with each other when you look along. Uh, chassis over here, still all good. Um, this is actually about an hour after I finished, well, probably two hours after I finished filming part two. So that's still not fully cured. Now, if you remember we're in here, we looked at this step three. They're telling you to put the exhaust in. Why? Fit the axle into the chassis. No. And then fit the prop shaft. No. We'll get the wheels on first. And then we'll put the prop shaft in. Or we'll put the prop shaft in at the same time with the wheels. And then we can make sure. Because if you glue that in now, that's going to determine the angle that everything's going to sit on. As I explained before. Then we go over a page. And they're asking us to build up the rear tyres. Which I don't particularly want to do. Um... And then because I haven't put the, ax the, the axles in yet, and I'd rather put the wheels on at the end. Uh, and also we've got here, we've got some air tanks, which are B, sorry, B, which I've made up. Uh, they are in the box here and they're sort of made in two halves. I'd rather they made a cylinder and then caps on the ends and then you wouldn't have that seam to deal with. But uh, it is what it is. They're not going to be seen anyway. You've got the exhaust silencer there, which is that one there, which I've also done. So you can see those parts are crossed out. So that's going to be ready for the seam dealing when, we're, when we come to it. And here we have the exhaust going in. Now, it's showing the exhaust here. It looks like it goes around the outside um, and up over the axle. So it's going to sort of sit in here. In these little indentations there. Okay. So um, what we really want to do is get that exhaust built up take it off the truck, paint it all, and then put it back on after it's all painted grey, because we'll do some nice rust effects on that. But the other thing is, like I said back here, they're telling you to put the, the exhaust here. That just seems totally daft to me, fitting that there, because, you know, the engine's going to determine where that end ends up, and the rest of the exhaust is going to determine where that ends up. And if you just stick it on now, you, you know, it just seems crazy. So we'll do all this after we've got the engine in. So I'm going to start on the engine. So I'm going to break ranks with the build sequence as I normally do because everybody's build sequences is wrong except for mine. Okay, just bear that in mind. Yes, I am joking. Um, it just seems logical. Something I don't like about the engine and this is something a lot of manufacturers do. Clearly they forgot to fit, to make the bracket to hold this fuel filter, whatever it is. Um, so they've made out a bloody photo etch and, and and it's obvious that it's done that way because there's that tiny little fret with just those two bits on it so you know stop doing it manufacturers please it's, it's ridiculous we're gonna have this little tiny bit of photo etch with that thing it's, it's gonna keep getting broken off because 
all we've got on there is the ends are going to be butt fitted so it's going to be end on you'll have no real big glue area you know i may even uh, make something out of plastic card instead of the photo etch because it's just stupid i don't know why they do it it's really annoying um it's like some companies like Ryfield model will make uh, little toe eyes and brackets on things out of photo etch you know it's like why just make it out of plastic like mini art do you know it, it can be done um i mean i know it looks bloody great but the trouble is when you're weathering and stuff you just catch it with a cotton mud or something ping off it goes you know so um yeah so anyway i'll stop waffling i'm going to get these bits off the sprue and we'll build up the main engine all right so we're just going to do this step here this is part of step five I'm assuming this is all step five. So we'll just do this part here and then we'll, we'll clamp that up and let it dry and I'll take Jess for a walk. Um, so edge and halves going together, sump going on, front cover going on. This is obviously going in the back of there. And I've got this little, um, probably a water out there or something there. And then it's telling us to glue the uh, bell housing on after. So we're going to put the engine halves together. There's no real alignment feature. You just have to you've got these undercuts here but um you'll notice i haven't bothered cleaning up the sprue nibs on these faces because we're going to be dealing with those seams anyway something that's all the way through this model everywhere you look it's very very small um attachments tiny little pins tiny little lugs tiny little flanges it's all very very small so you know in fact i'm going to use the quick setting for speed you need to be um very careful with your assembly you know those, remember those cross members going into the chassis they're very very small contact area there we go so that's gone together there and then the front just needs to come up a touch glue this one from the inside just like that I'm concentrating on getting this this elbow this whatever it is at the front this water elbow or something get that to line up and then we know we're good we just put a drop in there and a drop in there too much light Okay, so I want to get the sump on sharpish because that's going to affect how the how it all sits together. Again, you see you've got this tiny little recess in there, tiny little flanges on here. It's all beautifully moulded, but it's all tiny little areas. Now, does that go like that or does it go like that? So what I'm going to do is get this front cover on first. So showing this part here. G66 is like that with this opening down at four o'clock. So that's going into the back of there. So is that actually going to sit on the surface or is it sitting inside it? It looks like it's going to go like that, doesn't it? It certainly looks that way. And then that Okay, we've got this cut out in the front of the engine here. That's going to go on there like that. Right. Now, I don't want to fit this until I've taken care of that sprue nib and that seam. So we'll wait for the cement to dry. And then we can do that. We can fit this here. This little elbow, whatever it is. That's going into there. And again, as you can see, tiny little pin. It's it's absolutely tiny. It's crazy. Um, probably not going to fit there because it's going to get snapped off. Let's put that over there. Now, when this front cover goes on, that's going to sit in there like that. That's going to sit like that, yeah. Okay, so that is how it goes, right. 
and I don't want to put this on yet because it's going to get in the way when I want to clean up that seam. So we'll get the, let the block halves dry. I'll take Jess for a wander. I wonder how this bellowsing is going to fit. Again, you see we've got no real positive location for it. There's a there's a flange around the gearbox around the uh, the block there, but there's nothing radial. Um, looks like it's going like that. Is that right? Let me hear for some somehow. That is locating. That is weird. I see these flats are going in between those lugs on the side. That's what's giving it location. Okay. So that's going to fit like that. Right. So I'll let this dry, give it a sand, and then I'll come back after I've taken the little Jess out. Right. See you in a minute. Hey, we're back. I'm still not anything to eat, but uh, Jess has had a nice walk. So and we've got the, the tumble dryer going. If you hear anything, that's what you can hear in the background. So this front engine, what we do here, we put this panel in the back. I've gone around with some super glue, filled in the gap and sanded it out. Super glue in the tops and in there. There's a lot of super glue in there. You can see there's a quite a big gap at the top where there's a, a you know, where the molding comes around soft. So that's always something to look out for. And then here we have our uh, engine front cover. So I'm going to grab the extra thin and put some in there and I'm going to put some up there so that's that glued on cemented on sorry I get told off if I say glue sometimes so that goes like that and then before that dries what we're going to do is fit the sump there we are so there's the sump whoops pushed it forward and knocked the front cover off oh dear some reason that doesn't want to stick on there. It's very strange. Okay, so here we go. Right, and now we're going to get this on before it dries because I think this helps with the positioning of it. And there we are. I can see that we've got a bit of a gap there, so I'm going to sand away some of this lower flange and let the let the sump sit deeper onto the engine. That's better. Okay, so we can now put some cement in there, and we can put some cement in there, just like that. Drop into that corner. Drop into that corner and it can all capillary around and do its thing. And we'll be happy. I think what we'll do, we will grab one of our Swedish Rebel Hobby clamps and give that a clamp. There we are. Lovely. Right. And then we can fit the bell housing which goes on like so and it's quite sloppy as you can see so I think what we have to do is just sort of even it up really again we've got this tiny little very shallow location in there All right and then you've got a tiny little shallow flange on there so it's again it's very very small locations for things So that's going to sit on there and I think if we push it down it's about right. So I'm just going to brush some cement into there. It's really weird how this is, it's like I've got a dodgy sprue or something. It's like it doesn't instantly weld or it normally does. Very strange.
There we go. That's going in like that. That's going in there and I'm going to give it a twist just to make it square with the engine block. You can see here we've got this rectangle. So what I'll do, if I grab a long straight edge that next to that, I can check that it's actually vertical. Not that it matters, I don't think. <clears throat> so there we are. So that's going to sit going to have some mounts on the side probably these here or is it here and uh, probably something at the front and we've got this little water elbow to go on but I'm very tempted to leave that off um, because it's just going to get broken off during the engine assembly because it's going to be sit sitting there poking out so what we'll do we will do our doof, 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 doof. And we will do our, oof, like that. there we go. So that part there, I'm going to have to start another one of my takeaway boxes. Let me go. Right, so there we go. I've got the engine clamped up and I've got my box of takeaway bits and pieces, or takeaway curry sauce tub this is. But, uh, that barrel's a bit big to go in there, so we'll chuck that in the bottom of the box. But we've got our tub of little bits and pieces there that we won't lose. Um, so there we are. So the next step is going to be all of this detail work down here. So I've got to get these little assemblies glued together down here. I need to do some research and find out what engine this is. I don't even know what colour it should be painted. Uh, there are no colour callouts for it. We've got the colour callout there for the fan belt. That's obviously going to be black. I'm assuming the rest of the engine will probably be grey. But some engines were painted in like a, a very pale blue colour, weren't they? Um, I think it's probably grey. Most of the German engines were. Um, but I've had a I've had a quick look online. It just keeps coming up with um, SDKFC nine, so which is a family, I think, isn't it? No, nine. I can't remember now if it's SDKFC nine is a family or not. But uh, anyway, um, I don't think it is, is it? Because the family's got a V eight. So I'm going to have to do a bit of research, find out what engine it was, and then see if I can find an image of it. I'll have found it, before you start writing your comments now to tell me what it is, I'll have found it before I come back. Because um, what I want to do, I want to find some images, um, and then see if it's worth actually plumbing this engine. I think it'll look quite good, because we've got some beautiful detail on it, on the upper side here of the cylinders. Um, and that could be where the fuel injection pipes go in. And then we've got the actual fuel injection pump here. G56, which is probably beautifully moulded. There it is there. It's beautiful. So I think the engine would um, benefit from having some pipe work added. Just make it look a bit better, isn't it? But I can't really do much of that. I can't fit these uh, rocker covers because obviously it's all clamped up. I don't want to let it dry. Um, so I'll be back. It'll be a few seconds for you, but it's probably going to be tomorrow for me because I'm about to go and join Moss on his live stream. So I'll see you in a minute. All right, so it is the next day now, and I've got all of the parts off for the engine other than the um, the fan, um, because I want to be able to paint the belts without having the fan in the way. So I'll put the fan on after. Um, I still can't even find what colour this engine's supposed to be. I was going to go on and put injection lines on because we've got the fuel injection pump here, and you've got the six outlets. And then the six inlets are actually in the um, rocker covers here. And there's another pipe that goes straight across these, uh, whatever they are, I assume they're plugs or something. Um, you know, um, oh, what are they called? Hot plugs, whatever you call them, I can't remember now. Um, but those things, uh, glow plugs, that's what I was looking for. So I'm, I'm, I was going to put that the, the, the cables in there and everything, but do you know what? I really can't be bothered because you've got the engine side panels. If you look forward in the instructions where you fitted the engine side panels, uh, it'll be on this previous page here. You can see here that when you actually got the engine in there, you can't really see much of it at all anyway. So I might even just glue the bonnet down. We shall see. Uh, but uh, I think well, it's, it's a lovely little engine, so we'll build it and um, see how it looks. And that we need the sump down there anyway. So, um, 
I'm guessing the first thing you do is fit these uh, these rocker covers and they fit beautifully in these little recesses. I've got to make sure I've cleaned the super glue out from the ends where I've put the, the super glue. But they're gonna glue in there, absolutely lovely. Something I am noticing with this kit, which seems to be a theme going all the way through and it's a, a little bit of a, a, you know, it's taking it from a, a, a nine out of 10 to a seven out of 10. Um, a lot of the location points are absolutely tiny. It's ridiculous. Uh, when you look at this injection pump, you've got two nice big pins on the back of there, look, okay, that go into these two nice big holes in the side, and it sits on that shelf, so it's a really, really great positive location. But then when you come to um, these little bits here, these little caps that go on, you've got here in the sides of the block, you've got this this sort of oval flange, which is which is great. We've got this tiny little square hole in there. And then on the back of these, you can see there is an absolutely minuscule little square pin on there that goes in there. So, you know, they, they could have made that pin a millimetre long, you know, and, and had that hole a millimetre deep. Um, it's the same with the, the exhaust manifold. You've got two... You can see you've got one recess there, one recess there, the rest are all blank. But when you actually look at the manifold itself, if you look at the lugs that are on there, they're absolutely tiny. And then here where the exhaust pipe joins on the back, again, absolutely tiny. Um, and when you look around this engine, there's all these bits going together and there's no sort of solid positive location for any of it. You know, it's the same with this little water elbow on the front here. You know, I've left that off from this step here because it's just, it, it, there's no support for it at all. And um, it's kind of a theme, you remember on the chassis, all these cross members, there was just like a little recess for them. And, you know, nothing's really, um, nothing's really positive. The axles, uh, as you know, they're all glued together now. They've been 24 hours, so they're nice and solid. I still haven't glued the axles into the springs themselves. And that gives me the ability to, as you can see, twist it. And that's, that'll make sure we've got all the wheels on the ground. Um, Oh, and as for these little afterthought photo etch bits here, which are pathetic, uh, you can see here in the instructions, they're telling us to put them on the front here. You've got TP2, TP3, and then this oil or fuel filter, whatever it is. Um, so what they're telling you to do, they show you, it's just resting on top of that timing cover at the front. So what I've done, I've cut a couple of grooves in the top of the timing cover to give them something to sit in. So it gives it a bit of a more positive location so they won't just fall off as soon as you look at them. So um, that's a real afterthought. I don't know why they, they didn't do that in plastic because they forgot. I can tell you that now. <laughs> um, and that's why the, the photo etch, you can see in the bottom of this box here, we have the photo etch sheet and you can see that's it's like an afterthought with just those two bits on that strap, whatever it is there. So um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, so um, let's get on and get some of this glued together. Uh, I'm tempted to sort of start with this injector pump. I really, if I change my mind, it's going to be difficult for me to drill it, but uh, we shall see. So that's going to go in there and sit in those two holes. So we'll put a drop of extra thin in each one of those holes. A nice big drop, just like so. And then that shaft is going to go into that hole in the back of that timing cover there. And then it's going to go into those two holes just like that. So you can see, like for that, you know, for that injection, injection pump, we've got a pin in a hole. We've got it sat on a base, and you've got two positive pins going into two holes on the side of the block. And then other stuff is just like pretty much butt joint. It's it's crazy. Anyway, enough moaning. Right. So um, we're actually skipping header on. We should be doing this first. So we'll get. We get these rocker covers on. I'm tempted kind of to get these on and clamp them because they just want to keep lifting out. That middle one's all right. You can see that doesn't want to stay down. So I think what I'm going to do is get them on, get them clamped. So we'll grab one of our Rebel Hobby clamps. Pull this down. 
and that will hold them all in position and then we can literally give that a really good RPO because I want to make sure they all pull down and we can literally put a drop of cement in there drop of cement in there a drop in there and then we'll do the opposite corners enough to hold them in so we'll let that dry I need to um, move this clamp around a bit because it's in fact what I'll do is I'll come in from this side that's better so that's them all held down now so they can dry in situ and then we can come back to the engine and move forward hey they're dry now so um that's all looking good. So let's get on and get this engine put together. I think that's going to be the subject of this video. It's going to be building the engine. And if I decide to add some detail later, I will. Right, so um, down in here, you've got these two sub-assemblies which I've already done. So we've got one there and we've got one there. So these two are going to go in the front of the engine here. So this has got the, the shape on the back that's going to go into there. So that's going to pop into there like so. Here we are, like that. So I'm going to grab some extra thin, just put a drop of that in there and let that run around and do its thing. And get that in nice and straight. I've put a drop too much cement on there actually. It's, uh, there we go, right. So that's that in. Cool. As I say, you're not going to see much of this engine when it's in the model anyway, so uh, we don't need to be too fussy about it. Now, I've, I've looked at this. This is not very clear in the instructions. You've got two arrows there. It shows you there's, if you look closely, there's two little grooves on the flange on the top of the sump. And there they are there. You can just about see them. And you've got these two legs on the bottom here and they're going to go into those grooves. So basically this is going to sit in those two grooves like that. So yeah, not the uh, greatest of locations, but um, I'm going to put some cement up in here as well, just to make sure it doesn't just fall off because it's such a tiny tiny area that's it so that's um that's that one done then we've got this piece g12 which is here and this is a little i don't know priming pump or something by the look of it it's got a handle on the top i've got a mold seam down the middle so i'm just going to get rid of that there we go that's that dealt with so we'll put a drop of cement in there you see now here we've got a nice big square tab and we've got a nice big deep hole so it's sort of weird how it's it's like two designers worked on this there we go so that's gone in there like that that's like some kind of fuel primer i think um and then we have here, we have an engine mount N35. So grab an engine mount. And I actually test fit one of these and they fit lovely. So you can hear that. So if you listen to that, it kind of slides in with a little beautiful fit. So that's gone in there. like so and I'm going to put it in the other side now we'll do that later um, so we've got that there and then we've got these three bits across the top which I'm not going to put on right now because they're um they're going to stick up and be vulnerable we've got the exhaust here now what I'm going to try and do is not glue the exhaust to the engine um, what I'm going to try and do is sort of put the exhaust in and, and glue the exhaust to it so that I can take the exhaust out as an assembly 
paint it, weather it, rust it, everything like that. But we've got this flange going on the back, which is part C28. You can see we've got a drawing, we've got a drawing there showing which way it goes. So we can see that that, that sort of rectangular cutout is, is sort of off centre and that's going to point up to the top. So what we'll do is we'll get some glue on that massive pin, look, a huge pin that's sticking out there. Just get some cement on there. And then it's going like that. Yeah, that's it. So when you look at the exhaust manifold, it sits like that. It's going to twist around a bit, actually. There we go. I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's only there for show. There we go. Just going to run round up a little bit of cement just to make sure it's nice and strong. There we go. Now I don't want to glue this on, but it's, when we do fit it, it's going to fit. As I said earlier, you've got these tiny, tiny little raised areas on the ends, and they're going to go into those little recesses in the uh, in the cylinder head there. So what I'm going to try and do is. is somehow tape that on or something and then put the engine into the chassis and build the exhaust up as one so uh right we're good move i'm not going to put these bits on here the u18 because they're going to stick up as you can see there they stick up and be vulnerable so i'm going to leave those off for now so we've done we've done that we've done that we've done that we haven't done them um, okay we haven't added anything flimsy we'll do that after we've done this work with the exhaust then when we come to here, we have, uh, we've done that. Uh, right, we've got these bits and pieces on the front. So we've got this um, starter motor going in the side. So we'll move out to the side of the engine. We've got the starter motor going in there. So that is literally going to drop in like so. That's a lovely fit. So we'll just sort of cement where it touches, really. Okay, so it looks like I've got the bellows in slightly out of line. You can see there that where the starter motor is, it's like the bellows he wants to come round. But if I did twist the bellows in round, that um, box on the back would be out of line. So probably worth fitting the bellows and the starter motor at the same time. Hmm, it's a shame that. Never mind, we're not going to see it. This other engine mount that's going to go in there just like so. Again, we'll just glue where it touches. So that's going in there. So I just want to look now. So that's going to go in, that pin's going to go into that prop shaft. So it looks like we're going to have the radiator supporting the front. Um, yeah, it looks like those radiator pipes are going to support the front of the engine, which isn't ideal. But uh, okay, so that's that. Um, now we've got the fan pulleys going on on the front. So that one's going to go in there and that one's going to go on there. Wrong way round, nice. Whoopsie daisy. So that one's going to go on there. Okay, so that's all lovely. Just going to shorten that pin a touch because it's a, a little long. A little on the long side. It's crazy. I'm 
going to end up taking it all away in a minute. Drop a spent in there. There we go. So that's fitted in there. I've managed to push that uh, priming thing out or whatever it is. So there we are. Um, Do, 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 do. Done the engine mount, we've done the starter motor, and we've got some pipes going on which are going to go onto the radiator. I don't want to fit any because it's just going to get broken off. Um, and we've got now we've got to do this photo etch right. So, as I said earlier, I made some grooves for this photo etch to go in. So I'm just going to check this will actually go into that groove. Yes, it will. So we can put some super glue It's not enough. So we've got some super glue on there and that's sitting in the groove. That has to sit just shy of vertical. Like so, and then this one is going to go that way up. We get some glue on the bottom of that one. Oops, and that one is going to sit in there, like so. That one needs to be moved back. This is the beauty of this VMS guy stuff. It's it's sometimes it's a pain. You want it to dry fast, but when it's th something like this, it's good that it doesn't dry too fast. Let's wipe that away from there. I've got super glue on my tweezers now, which is never good. Just clean that off on a cloth. Put super glue on my nice clean mat. Yeah, the beauty of this stuff is it it doesn't dry straight away, so you've got plenty of time to manoeuvre your stuff. Manoeuvre your bits, I mean. It's nice to manoeuvre your bits, isn't it? Um, which is great for ship modellers. Not shit modellers, ship modellers. So that's going to go in like that. And this bottom piece has to push over into it. I'm going to have to go off camera guys because I need my magnifier. I'm going to have to get my eyes checked again as well I think. I'm struggling to see that. There we go, they've gone together now. Or have they? Yeah they've gone together now. That's how it's supposed to go. I'm going to get some fresh super glue and then we'll glue that and then leave it to dry. Back in a minute. All right, so um, <clears throat> got those bits of photo etch glued on uh, with the black VMS, extra thin, the black, v black thin VMS. Uh, brilliant, brilliant super glue it is. Um, as you can see, I can come along now with a little sander and just sand away any excess. Once it's all painted, that won't show. And that is the beauty of using this black glue. It's um, You can see where it is rather than... You know, all of a sudden you put your paint on and discover you've got a great big lump of bloody super glue there. But with the black stuff you can see it. But we can see we've got that down in there in those grooves and that's nice and strong. So that little um, filter or whatever it is is going to go on there. But I'm not going to add it right away because it's going to be quite vulnerable for the next bit we're doing. So, <clears throat> as you know, as I mentioned in... Was it earlier or was it in the last video? I can't remember now. Um... The build sequence here is a bit daft. They're telling you here to fit the exhaust and fit this prop shaft. Um, and then 
come along here and do the rest of the exhaust but you've got this bit of tailpipe here sticking up into the engine bay which doesn't even have a square lump on it as it shows there so there's no proper location for it so I don't want to glue the exhaust manifold to the engine because I want to be able to paint the exhaust manifold rusty uh, and the engine's not going to be rusty it's going to be painted a certain color whatever that may be um, and then of course if I'm going to paint the exhaust and get it rusty and everything I really want to try and do it in one so I've had a good look and as you can see here um, we have the rest of the exhaust system going on so we've got the silencer there which is made up of two halves which I've done it's right there which I've done so we've got the silencer we've got the main pipe off and cleaned up and everything and I've drilled the the end to thin it right out so you get a proper thin exhaust um, <clears throat> So that could go all onto the silencer and then we've got this pipe here so what I've done I've actually drilled the as I said they don't give you any really proper location pins so you've got to put your own in so I've drilled some 0.5 holes in there and put some 0.5 brass rod in I've drilled some 0.5 holes in there so that exhaust manifold will literally pop in there pop in there just like that job done okay so there's our exhaust manifold in place and then the tailpipe, sorry, the exhaust system, it's got a hole in it. We've got a pin on there on the back end. We've got a brass pin, we've got a hole in there. So that's going to go on there and that's going to go into the chassis. We've got our silencer there and then we've got the, the, the rest of the exhaust going on there. So what we're going to do is build this up actually on the chassis, glue it all up, let it set and then we'll go from there. So. First things first, I'm going to put the, no I'm not, I'm going to put the exhaust on as they say, but I'm going to fix it with a peg rather than glue it because I want to be able to take it off. That gearbox has come loose by the look of it. Um, so I'm going to fix that in place. Yeah, it looks like that gearbox is only actually attached by the prop shaft now. That's okay. Um, so that's now fixed in place with a peg. So we can come along now and we can fit this silencer, which is a beautiful fit. You've got these rods sticking out here, which are actually the the sides of the massive U, U clamps that hold this thing in place. So what we can do there push that together, just going to give that some support with tweezers and give it a little squeeze and then push that together so it all lines up nicely okay so you can see we've got the the bolts kind of lining up there what we can do is just flex them to get them to line up and the same underneath so what we can do then I'm going to use quick setting Just going to glue that into there <clears throat> just like so frog in my throat again as usual now the main exhaust system i'm gonna to have to get some more pegs out the main exhaust system is going to go into little holes in the sides of the chassis and the pipe is actually going to fit into the back of the silencer like that and we've got these little tiny holes. In fact, I've just noticed I've got a mould seam there still. Don't really want to be taking mould seams out. Don't want to be taking mould seams out after it's all glued together. That'd be a nightmare. So that's going to go in like that into the back of there. And then We've got little pins on these clamps that are going to line up with these tiny little holes in the chassis. So there's one there, so I can clamp that into position. You'd have thought they'd have given us a little bit more length on that silence on that pipe, wouldn't you? <coughs> I don't think that peg's doing me many favours actually. that's going in there let's get my um plunging fire pegs they're far better than those rubber things then we're going to put a peg on that one there like so and 
then we've got we've got a little hole down there but I'm not going to peg that one I'm going to cement that pipe into the back of that silencer okay so you can see what we're doing we're building up the complete exhaust and then what we can do once the chassis is painted and the exhaust is all painted and rusted we can put the complete exhaust system down through and then pop the engine in after or what I have done I've tested it you can actually get the complete exhaust to go down next to the gearbox even if the engine is fixed in place so I shouldn't have done that I shouldn't have knocked that there we go right so that's all going together like that that's good enough that's plenty good enough so now I want to put the engine what I'm going to do is put the exhaust manifold onto the engine with its brass pins and then I don't want to hold it on the exhaust I'm going to slot that pin into the top of that downpipe like so and then we're going to slot the gearbox into that little prop shaft and then push the engine down onto its mountings and as you can see we are there so we've now got a complete exhaust system and what we can do is grab a drop of super glue in fact what I'll do is I'm going to lift this engine out so I get a nice strong joint on here I'm going to put some super glue on this pin so it gets into that we shouldn't wipe most of it off because I've purposely made the hole oversized so it slides in easily I'm going to slide that into that hole there. We're going to slide the prop shaft into there. Push that up in so it's nice. So the downpipe is in there good and solid. Okay. And there we go. The engine sat on its mountings. The exhaust manifold sat in the side of the engine. And the exhaust pipe there is all connected up. I can put a drop of extra thin in there. I've got to be careful not to knock anything here. And there we are. There we have a complete exhaust system that's not attached in any way to the rest of the model. So it means we can paint it. So if you want to follow along with my build, then you can. And if you don't, then you don't have to. That pin there doesn't line up with that hole. So we'll have to cut that pin off because it's pushing the silencer out. So um, there we are. So this is my way of doing it. And uh, I think it's going to be a far better result. Now at the back here, I don't know what to suggest. Because we've got these brackets here, it's pushing the tailpipe out. So I guess that might look a little bit more realistic, really. I don't know, we shall see. I don't know what's supposed to happen. Let's see if we've got a picture of the back of the chassis. I bet we don't. Yeah, we're bound to when we start fitting the, the upper parts on. Yeah, that's right. So it does, it, it comes out on an angle, as you can see there. So that's good. Right. So once again, we're going to have to let that set before we start messing around with it. And I'm also just going to get a drop of super glue, put it around there. There we go. As we can see, the engine is, you know, it's going to come up like that. But that's not going to make any difference. It's just a slight angle change. So uh, here we go, leave that to dry and then we'll come back and get that engine finished off. Okay, so I've done a little bit more work here and as you can see I've got the radiator together, it's not glued together yet, 
we do have some sink marks in the top so we've got some black super glue in there to fill them in but I've, put, I've fitted this top hose piece which it's all very very flimsy this piece here that goes on the engine um, they're having you here make it here look, look like it goes vertical don't fit that part until you've got the engine in the chassis I've, I've just I've just fitted it here and I've just noticed I've noticed that when you look at it when it's in the chassis it can't sit vertically because the chassis rail the cross member is in the way okay come on camera there you go so what I've done, I've drilled it and pinned it. I've got bloody pins everywhere on this. So it's it's free to move. So I can sort of position it. Once the engine's in, the radiator's in, I can position it into the, to line up with the hose on the bottom of the radio there, which again has a tiny, tiny little hole in it. And then on the end of here, there is an absolutely minuscule pin. It's starting to become annoying now. Um, and I can get them lined up, glued together, and that'll be that all done, all solid. So, um, yeah, I need to let that pipe there set, and I'm probably going to break it off a million times. But we need to put something in place, because I was just in there with all these bits that we're not going to fit. So, um, there we are. So that's that done. These air tanks are going to go on the sides here. There's slots in them which go onto the chassis like that. Okay, so they're going to go on there like that, right. So um, there we are. So it's just a case of, oh, and the instructions are as clear as mud when it comes to fitting the radiator. It just says, put it down in there. And you look forward in the manual here, you can see that the radiator actually goes in between those two little lugs there on the radiator. So I'll just show you what I've done. My battery's about to go again. See what I've done. The radiator is going to sit in between those two little lugs, I believe. So uh, there we go. Right, so I'm going to leave that all to dry. Back okay, so here we go. We'll finish this off now. Finish this segment off, I need not the model. Um, so everything's in there. Everything's just placed into position. So as I say, the radiator goes into those little pins in there. We've got that bottom pipe in on the um, on a piece of brass. And I've just put a bit of super glue just to sort of lock it in place the lower pipe the lower hose is roughly in line with the radiator but it's um sorry i'm off camera but it's very very difficult to uh, to get it to line up so the thing to do is get the engine in solid and then just pull things about and sand and fill or whatever uh, so we can literally lift the radiator out got the uh, super glue in the top there dealing with those sink marks so what we can do here is hold the engine down at the back where it's fitted into the chassis we can actually pull the exhaust manifold out. I've done this three times. I've had this engine out of here three times and it's just come apart really easily. So why now is it being a swine? It's because the camera's on. Okay, so if we decided to glue the engine in before the exhaust, I think I can show you here that we can take it out like that. So we can actually glue the engine in and before the exhaust and then fit it all in. Remember, this is going to be all covered in rust and everything. So we've now got a one piece exhaust, which is we're just going to fit back into the chassis, pinned in everything. So it's all nice and strong. So that's good. We can lift the engine out. Just like so. I've put this pipe in here. This pipe here goes along and then goes down into the water pump. Um, and this here is, as I say, looks like they want it vertical in the instructions if you put it vertical the engine won't physically fit down in there but it's sort of you can see where it goes hopefully Jeff will watch this and it'll help when he gets to his engine if he hasn't got there yet um, but I've pinned that with brass so it makes it a lot stronger otherwise it's just it's it's a tiny tiny I showed you it's like a, a 0.75 millimeter square which is about 0.25 millimeters long it's just ridiculous um, this rear bell housing, I actually ended up putting some uh, extra thin around it and I broke it away and then refitted it because that was really getting on my nerves, that joint there. So um, it's a bit, bit gluey, bit messy, but we'll put some mud on there or something. Um, yeah, so there we go. So that's that. Uh, we can fit the engine onto that prop shaft and into its engine mounts on the chassis there. And as you can see, we can drop the radiator in like so into those grooves and it just 
automatically lines up. It's um, it's great. Okay, but we have to be very very careful handling the engine, not to pull on that pipe. So there we are. So that's our engine pretty much complete. We've got those three bits to go on the top. I'm actually tempted to pin those with brass as well because, you know, as I said, you've got this. You can see here these locations. They're literally like ten thou deep. And you've got these three. There's these pots. I'm not sure what they are. Um, little oil pots or oil filler pots or something. I'm not sure. But they're going to go into there. There's four of them because there's two U sprues, and I had to pick the one that I sanded the lump off. You can see on the back of there, we have this absolutely tiny, minuscule little pin that's going to go in there, and I'm worried I'm going to just break them off. So I'm tempted to pin them with brass. We shall see. I'll have done that by the time we come back for part four. So what I'm going to do is um, let all this go off, uh, make, make sure it's all nice and um, clean and everything. I'm going to put another drop of extra thin in there because that pipe is coming away from that water pump. There. There we go. So um, there we are. There is our engine. Okay. Now, if I decide to put the wiring in and that, I'll show you how I did it, but uh, I very much doubt that I will. So, there we go. Right, I will see you all for part four. Thank you very much for watching, and um, hopefully you've learned something from this. But uh, it seems like the, the kit should come with um, a bag of 0.5 brass rod, eh? <laughs> so there we go. Right, thank you for watching. Bye for now.